All right, so for our last type of Riemann sum calculation, instead of using a rectangle, which we've seen in the previous three examples with the left point, right end point, and midpoint, we're gonna use a different geometric shape this time to see if we can get a little bit more accuracy. And this time we're gonna use a trapezoid. Now, we will have to familiarize ourselves with the area formula for a trapezoid because notice how the area of a rectangle was important for us um, to get our area estimates for the area under the curve. So the area of a trapezoid is uh, listed at the top where we have one half times the height times the sum of the bases. Now, in terms of drawing a trapezoid, the typical trapezoid that you probably talked about in geometry class was usually oriented like this, where the base are the parallel sides. So we can label kind of base one and base two. And then the height is described as the vertical distance between the bases or separating the bases. So that would be uh, kind of this vertical distance here. Okay, that forms that right angle. So this is how it was normally drawn in your geometry class. Our trapezoid, however, is going to be oriented slightly different. Um, we're going to actually take this trapezoid and rotate it counterclockwise 90 degrees. So that's going to make it look something like this. Okay, so in this case, we have base one, base two, and notice how the height, instead of being vertically oriented, it's now horizontally oriented. So that's what's a little difficult for some students to kind of wrap their heads around because when I say the word height, you're usually used to that meaning going up and down. But notice how if we orient our, tri our, our trapezoid this way, the height is actually a horizontal distance. So we have to be careful with that kind of measurement. Now we're going to take a look at the same function as before and we're still going from 1 to 7. And in this case, we want to use lengths of 2 to draw in our trapezoids. So start at 1, length of 2 would mean we end at 3. Notice how the trapezoid is drawn straight up on either side to create those bases. So from this starting point of 1, I'm going to trace straight up and make a dot. I'm going to do the same thing from the x value of 3. And once you form those bases, you're going to connect those dots um, in a straight line. So something like that. Now the next rectangle is going to go from, th or not rectangle, trapezoid rather, is going to go from 3 to 5. You already traced up from 3, so now we just have to do that same thing from 5. And we're going to connect those dots with a straight line. All right, in our last uh, trapezoid from 5 to 7, you already traced up 5, so now we're going to trace up from 7 and connect the dots. So it looks like we have three trapezoids to calculate the area of. All right, so the integral, aka area under the f of x curve yeah, dx, is approximately. Now, when we start to calculate the area, we're going to use the area formula for each trapezoid. So. For the first trapezoid, I need one half times the height. Again, the height is now actually a horizontal distance, okay, the, the distance between the parallel bases. So this distance was actually two units. And then we need the sum of the bases. So in our trapezoid that we kind of listed at the top here, notice how the bases are actually the lines that you draw up to the curve. So this first line uh, would be the height of the curve at the x value of 1. And then the second base that we drew up is the height of the curve at 3. Okay, so here's our area formula to represent our first trapezoid. We're going to repeat the process for the other two. So 1 half, the height is 2, and then the sum of the bases. In this trapezoid, we have the base at the x value of 3, and then the base from the x value of 5. And then for the last trapezoid, its height is 2, and then the bases came from the x value of 5 and the x value of 7. 
right now again since it's the same example we should have these numbers available to us to help us with our calculation if not go ahead and find them using your calculator but after you get done with your computation we should get something like 38.6667 now, if we try to think about over or underestimate, it seems like I definitely have under here. I definitely have under here. This um, might be a little difficult for us to determine, so I can't really see anything to highlight as either an over or an underestimate. So I'm just going to go off of these two for sure ones that I can see based off the graph. So we'd have an underestimate.